anymore and you couldn't even see that now. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, and then I passed by one door and I'm like, holy oh, shit. Who's out here? Get out of that. Gonna be on camera? No, we're on camera. See that ant car? Woohoo, buddy. That's a fire ant hill. We're gonna cut this yard. What's left of the yard? And there is a house back there. <laughs> somewhere. Al Blades has been putting out some good videos. Talking about the worst yards on YouTube. Sometimes you gotta show them up. I mean, I'm taking on some crazy ones. <laughs> but they keep getting worse and worse. I don't know, maybe one over here. I was gonna keep that real big one. The rest of those can go. That'll open up the house. Yeah. Dude, that one by the house is like a 30 foot tree. We ain't taking that one. But we could trim up around it so you can see the house. I can totally take it down. I mean, it's just a little 30 foot tree. Well, I don't care. Whatever you want to do. It's just a little 30 foot tree. <laughs> that one probably ought to go. If you're For sure, take, all those. If you're going to take this one, I'd leave that little one over there and take these. All right, we'll start over here and we'll figure that out later. Oh no. What? Somebody just mowed eight foot tall grass for a single mom with three kids. Two of them are sick. The other one has a peg leg. They hey, should have four charities. I hate it too because they be downloading my stuff so they can hear it and talk crap about it. But it benefits me. All right, welcome back to the channel. Hey, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe. It's not gonna cost you a dime. And we leave a lot of tips and tricks on not only what we do in business to make things a little more efficient for ourselves and make things run smoother, but also how to tackle some of these crazy projects. Now, if you are looking at your yard and it's significantly more manicured than this one, which I hope it is, we also leave a lot of tips on how to make things a little more efficient or easier for yourself. And, you know, I mean, that's kind of what our channel is about. Now we do a lot of these crazy charity cuts where they're a donation service to the community. Now one reason we do that is I really enjoy a challenge and then the other reason is it helps people out. So if that's something that you would like to support just by leaving us a comment or a thumbs up, um, subscribing if you really like us or even sharing us out goes a very long ways to allowing us to continue doing these type of projects. Normally I knock out these jobs alone but in some of my videos you'll see my brother working with me and in this case this is actually my father working with me. I always enjoy when he's working with me. Uh, you know when I get with my family things get a little wild, we get a little more joking and we have more fun so you know this is something that I have no doubt in my mind I will hold this job near and dear to my heart for a long time. Uh, as far as what my dad's doing right now, he's mowing, but you'll notice that he's going back and forth. He's doing that for a reason. He's actually avoiding throwing grass into the street. That way it's safe for motorists, but it's also going to make it a lot easier when we go to clean up the property at the end of the project. Now the Kuchar saw here. It's gonna sharpen the chain. Now it's kind of cool to watch other people work with me because I can see what they do differently. And you know, right now my dad's using kind of a back and forth method where he's shooting everything to one side of the property. I would have probably done it a little bit different and shot everything towards the inside of the property, taking um, passes in a longer length. But it really doesn't matter. the The main thing is to let somebody you know get familiar with the piece of equipment so that they can be efficient with it and uh, in this case you know nothing's wrong here so it's not an issue um, now the big plus side of the way he's doing it is it's not actually scalping that ditch you know a lot of the times if you go from one side of the property to the other lengthwise um, you have to be real careful at the center point of that ditch at the, at the bottom of the valley because you can actually scalp there now on a project like this scalping is kind of the least of our worries uh, what's going to happen is it's all going to die out and green up later, but if you're on a well manicured lawn, that's going to matter. You 
is every time I'm going to use a saw. The Gucci's pretty new. This is the second time I've used it. I'm going to be using a decent amount today. This chain they put on, it's kind of subpar. It stretches out a lot. I'll replace it with an Oregon chain. It'll do fine. The saw's got a lot of power. So, at this point, to know whether it's good or not, it's just, what's the longevity of it? Is it going to last a long time? If it does, then it's a good buy. But either way, it's like 130 bucks on Amazon, which I consider a steal, because I've got a uh, C310 C Echo. I think it's a 30cc saw, and uh, it was 300 and something bucks. 200 and something now, I think. My point there is that these gas engines are getting more and more competitive. Of course, you get what you pay for, but the thing is, if you're not using it a whole lot, you don't need top of the line, big dog, crazy stuff. In fact, for most people, a battery operated unit would probably be sufficient. If you're uh, a homeowner and you hardly ever use a chainsaw, I just suggest getting a battery unit or renting a unit. Chainsaw is good to have around. It's a good tool. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, what's using my life? Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Now that's that thing called life. And when we begin to understand and know that, accepting that reality that, that we will never ever have things just on an even kill all the time, that you're gonna have some ups and you're gonna have some downs. But during those down moments, that's where the growth takes place. That's where the work is. See, anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid, they have happy relationships, business is successful. Anybody could be positive then. See, but the real challenge, the real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. Somebody said that, that adversity introduces a man to himself. How you handle it. That's where the growth takes place. Evaluate where you are. What brought you there? What role did you play? What did you learn from it? Are you learning anything? Or are you doing it over and over and over again? Somebody said that insanity is doing the same thing in the same way, expecting a different outcome. Are you going through it or are you growing through it? Are you bigger and better because of it? because it's not going to leave you until you grow through it. Life isn't fair, life just is. Things are going to happen to you and the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go and move so you can grow. It doesn't matter about what happens to you, what matters is what are you going to do about it? All of us have experienced some tragedy and if we haven't, we will. And you can either let it destroy your life or you can build upon it. You can permit it to let, you, let it hold you down or you can decide I'm not going to let that happen to me. I'm bigger than this. Make a declaration to yourself. Declare all out war that you're going to get out of this rut. I don't care how good you are, I don't care how talented you are, I don't care how much you work on yourself, there are some times when things aren't going to go right. They just are not going to go right. There are times when anything that can happen will happen. Murphy's Law will be knocking at your door. Find somebody that you can help so you can forget about you for a moment. See, sometimes the best thing to do is to be. Don't allow your emotions to control you. We are emotional, but you want to begin to discipline your emotion. 
If you don't discipline and contain your emotions, they will use you. Your mind goes on automatic, just like a guard. You know, I loved reading the book called As a Man Think It by James Allen. He uses the analogy of the mind being like a garden. You know, weeds don't have to have any encouragement to grow. You don't have to water them. They don't have to get sunshine. They don't have to have fertile ground. They will grow through the cracks of a sidewalk. But if you want to grow orchids or roses or any kind of exotic flowers, there are special processes and procedures you must go through. Well, by the same token, you don't have to force yourself or motivate yourself to think negatively, to be depressed to hate somebody, to want revenge, to want to get back at somebody, to beat yourself up over the head, to feel loaded with guilt. You don't have to make any effort to do that. Your mind is on automatic. It will do that by itself. But if you want to begin to move into your own personal greatness, if you want to begin to really enjoy a happy, successful, healthy life, you've got to be willing to go against the tide. You've got to be willing to harness your will and say, in spite of this, I'm in control here. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this destroy me. I'm coming back, and I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. See, whatever experience you're having right now, it has not come to stay. It has come to pass. All right, so I cut all that, and this crappy stock Kutcher chain's already already shot. So you can tell it's already stretched. So I'm gonna let that cool off. I'm gonna put the chain at the right tension, and then I'm gonna sharpen it back up. But I'm gonna tell you, the saw's got the power. It's just like the Kutcher brush cutter. The unit's got the power. It just needs, uh, you know, like the little stuff. Like they had to cheap out on this. They'll get you a $25, $30 chain, put it on there, you got a good saw for relatively cheap. It was harder to start up today than it was the first couple days. But the brush cutter is still real easy to, to start up. We're gonna pull that out. Probably for a lot of that up there. And then the big stuff, I'll use the saw to cut down. Uh, woo, buddy! So all I've got left is this stump over here. I'm gonna cut that out. The rest of these, we're gonna cut and pull back into that nook over there in the trees where Dad's at right now. Seems like a good spot to put all the brush.
Uh, saw's got such a cheap chain. I got to uh, tension it back up, sharpen it out. Okay. But um, this already looks amazing. Yeah. Well, imagine what it's gonna look like when we're done cutting all that down. I got another chainsaw at the house. Well, worst case scenario, I got my pole saw. Well, I mean, I got another chainsaw to have brand new. Husqvarna! Husqvarna! Like a kid. That's a big ant man. He's gonna make them all mad and walking around over here before we get to this craziness. Yeah, it's good thick that, that. <laughs> Look at that little guy. You're shading. There it is. Just pulled him off my belly. Oh, kill him. Dog, oh, dude. Gnarly. Hey. No, Kevin, no. What? You're giving me the heebie-jeebies. This house has always been overgrown. I don't think it's been lived in since five years we've been in this area. And uh, I've never seen the front yard, ever. It's hot. It's, it's hot to south. It is cooking today. It's no joke.
believe there's a house back there. Yeah. This must be where the three bears live. Those three bears live in there? All right, it's incredibly hot. I jumped in the truck for a minute. Got cooled off the AC a little bit. And I've got the truck running. That way in case we get too hot, we can jump in there. Uh, I don't have the tools I need to get my chain back on my pull saw. So I'm gonna get in that mess with the Kutri, get up and close and personal and knock all that down. But uh, we'll mess with that in a minute. Haven't had it that long. This kid's cold blooded. Doesn't look good, Coocher. <laughs> I don't like messing with equipment like this, Coocher. Thank <laughs> you. 
When I started this channel, I told myself I wasn't going to be like all the product pushers out there and say it's a game changer when it's really a hunk of crap. This is Amazon seller that sent it to me. Feels pretty good after that. Hey, I might be able to use that carburetor. cleaning up this mess <laughs> oh look daddy's got the Husqvarna it's a Swedish engine <laughs> towards the house? Yeah. Which way you want that to fall? That way. Why are you notching it towards the house? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? on the other side. Don't bust it. Don't do it. Don't. Come on. Chill out. 
Well, we're gonna have to rope that anyways. Yeah, dude, it's starting to go the other way. Okay, let's go. Great. Watch this. Okay, we're gonna call that good. Huh? <laughs> everywhere. Oh, I probably shouldn't tap on the house. Oh, oh, oh. The Greeks had the maxim, know thyself. How do we come to know ourselves in terms of our personalities and more importantly, potential? Well, one of the first ways to come to know yourself is to understand that you don't. You know, you can learn to kind of watch yourself like you're watching a stranger, but you have to adopt a position. It's a position of radical humility, I would say. Humility in two senses. So one sense would be the humility of recognizing your ignorance. So you have to understand that you don't know who you are. And that's not easy to understand because you think you know. But then, you know, you remember you can't control yourself very well. You're not very disciplined. You're full of flaws. Maybe you don't know yourself as well as you think. But it's hard to get low enough to understand how deeply it is the case that you are ignorant about who you are. Now there's an upside to that too, which also is that you're also ignorant about who you could be. And so the discovery of that, you know, is some reward for the horror of determining who you actually are. And then I would say, well, then you watch yourself. You watch yourself like you're watching a stranger. You watch what you say and you listen. And you think, well, what sort of person would say that? And how am I reacting emotionally when I'm communicating in that manner? Is that making me feel stronger, weaker? Is it, is it, is it filling me with shame? Is it helping my confidence? Um, am I laying out a lie? Am I deceiving myself and other people? Am I adopting this personality at parties that is designed to impress and to amuse and it comes across as nothing but self-centered narcissism? Um, what are my dark fantasies? What are my aggressive fantasies? Um, what is it that I'm willing to do? What am I interested in so that I'll spontaneously pursue it? 
What do I procrastinate about and why? What am I unwilling to do? What do I think is good? What do I congratulate myself for accomplishing? And what do I berate myself for failing to confront and to implement? Those are all incredibly complicated questions and you don't know the answers to them. So that's, that's a start. And then in terms of potential, well, you'll discover a little bit more about your potential as you discover who you are, especially the darker parts of yourself, because then you discover your potential for mayhem. There's some real utility in that. It's actually something that strengthens you because the first thing that a realization like that can in fact produce is the ambition to incorporate that dangerousness into a higher order personality. And that can make you implacable. That can make you someone who can say no when you need to say no. You know, that can make you someone who won't avoid necessary conflict. And so that's unbelievably useful. And so that's one of the potentials that you might discover. Definitely a bottle of BB. I'm not taking it with me. Rule four in my book, 12 Rules for Life, is compare yourself to who you were yesterday and not to who someone else is today. And that's kind of a good way to start this. It's like, well, take a bit of a look at yourself and think about what's not so good that you could improve that you should improve by your own standards and that you would improve. Well, that's the beginning. And then you challenge yourself continually to see how far past yesterday you can push today and tomorrow and to continually experiment with expanding the domains, not only of your competence, but of your ability to increase that competence. And the upper limit to that is proportional to the moral effort that you put into it. The more that's guided by the highest of all possible visions, right? The alliance with the highest of all possible conceivable good. And the more it's accompanied by truth in speech and action, the more you will develop your potential. And you also, I suppose, have to be willing to undertake that as an adventure because it's a hell of a thing to bear that kind of responsibility. It takes a person out of the ordinary. It takes them out of themselves. And there's an alienation and an isolation that goes along with that and a great sorrow, all of that together. But there's deep meaning to be had in it and it's, and there isn't anything better that you can do. So that's the answer to that question. Maybe not.
So as dad and I are working through this, we're uh, running into a lot of vines. It's kind of about as much of a headache as it can be for cutting this back. So we got a lot of brush in the trees, which is fairly easy to cut by itself. But, you know, with the overgrowth of vines that are growing on the house as well as through all the trees and just kind of connecting them together into one giant mess, uh, it's, it's kind of problematic. So in this situation, this is my uh, pull saw. I use the... 2620 um, PAS unit that's uh, echoes but there's still makes a combi system and pretty much all the big manufacturers have a similar uh, attachment series like this where you can have a pole saw I like that because I can have the weed eater an edger a pole saw brush trimmer hedge trimmers whatever right and it's just uh, you know just swapping out which head you're using but one of the reasons why I really like it for stuff like this is it actually gets me away from the cutting so when I'm using an actual chainsaw I'm up and close and personal so when you don't have any um, space to have an exit space you know so if you're cutting trees down you want to have an exit path so you can get away from what you're cutting so you get the point but the main thing is that the pole saw makes this type of work a lot easier Alright, so at this point you might be asking yourself why we have the mower out. We're actually going to use that to move a lot of this brush. Uh, anytime you can use a piece of equipment to do heavy lifting, it's going to save your back, your knees, wear and tear on your body. So, you know, a lot of people say that this can cause issues with the mower. Well, that's fine. It's much cheaper to replace a mower than it is to have back surgery. So this is a very, very cheap modification that you can do to your piece of equipment just by attaching a rope somewhere that it's secure, it's not going to get in the way. Um, and then from there, you basically just put a metal clasp on the end, or a carabine, whatever it might be, and you wrap that around the tree, and you hook it onto the rope, and then from there you can pull it right out. Now that rope on there is about $5, so this is a very, very cheap modification you can do that's going to make you a lot of money. It's going to save you a lot of work. Well, I gotta go cut a path for dad. He blocked himself in. Come a long ways. Get a little bit of sprinkle from those clouds. That's really nice. All right, this is the fun part. It's always fun when you get to use the machine to do something that would just absolutely destroy your body. It would definitely be leg workout day, moving some of this uh, brush. And one of the problems we were having on this job is that there were vines growing through all of the trees and the brush and the privet and everything that we had cut down. So I know at one point in time, we actually snapped the rope that's on the mower, which not a big deal, it's a $5 rope. All I did was tie it back in two and I guess tie it into one. I don't know. I took the two pieces of rope and I tied them together. And then after that, we're good. We're back and rolling. But, you know, on this tree limb here, that would have been definitely something that would have been beneficial to cut down into multiple pieces if we were going to move it by ourselves. Um, you know, and that way we wouldn't throw out our back. Just kind of is what it is. Um, yeah, I know in the beginning of my, my business, I didn't have the big mowers. And, you know, a lot of this I did by hand and you will absolutely destroy your body if you don't figure out ways to use your equipment to help you out 
And as you progress in business, make sure you get the equipment to, um, you know, allow you to do jobs without the fatigue. So, you know, in the beginning, it's push mowers, weed eaters, stuff like that, where you, you don't have a whole lot and a push mower is fine. And, um, having a small truck or having a setup where you're out of the back of your car, if you have that situation, don't feel bad about it. There's nothing to feel bad about it. You're going out there, you're making an honest living. You're trying to make it happen. Everybody starts at different stages. If you're looking at the guy with the setup with stuff like mine and, you know, I mean, we're almost 10 years in on this. All this stuff took time to build up. <laughs> Look at that massive load he drug over. All right, so one of the things, if you're using this method, um, it's best to run the rope through the Ys on the tree, if that makes sense. So where the limbs are coming off, run the rope through the Ys, and that, that way it doesn't slip off. And that's a, a real good way of getting things out there. If you don't have that option, you can wrap the rope around it a couple times. That way it grips. And then connect your, uh, your, your clasp or however you're doing it. I would suggest having a clasp of some kind so that you can uh, quick disconnect. So don't tie it on there because you'll keep tying it and stuff. This same method works really well with a, uh, if you have a long enough rope, you can actually connect it to the ball hitch on your truck or somewhere on your truck and trailer. And you can pull bushes and all sorts of stuff out. Um, one of the cheapest pieces of equipment I have, if you look at it that way, is just a rope that was given to me. It was an old climbing rope for, from an arborist. It was left at a job, and the person said, you can have it. And um, from there, you know, I took that thing, and I started yanking bushes out with it. And I bet that thing's made me three or $4,000 pushing, pulling bushes out over the years. Um and it's still good I've still got it so definitely a very good piece of equipment to purchase is you know um, just a good sturdy rope uh, one of the other things that I've had that has made me a lot of money is you know it's how I actually figured out how to use a method in the very beginning is I had another client that said hey uh, this tree guy came here he was cutting down stuff and he left this tarp here do you want the tarp and I'm like sure whatever well the tarp had a little bit of brush on it and I, you know, just grab the corners of the tarp, drug it, and I'm like, light bulb. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm starting to throw stuff on tarps and drag it to my truck. You know, come leaf season, I'm getting leaves onto the tarp, dragging it to my truck. It just makes life a lot easier doing stuff like that, especially the, the tarps come in handy when you're messing with smaller material. So, you know, little tree limbs, little branches, twigs, sticks, leaves, things like that. If you can throw it on a tarp, then it's game on.
right, it's starting to rain, which feels amazing. But it's just a little itty bitty baby cloud. When it's gone, it's gonna be hot. It's gonna be real humid. And the heat's falling right behind it. So now we just gotta cut out the big stuff. We got a bunch of vines in there. We can get it to the point where we can get the mower through there. Or a brush cutter and we're good. So we got this one by the garage, the big stumps. We gotta cut the vines off that pole. And that's pretty good. And then just out here, it's just pick up and then come in and mow where we use the brush cutter. So not too bad. What are your thoughts, Dad? Uh, it's a lot bigger job than what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was a big one. But uh, it looks pretty <laughs> cool. I mean, I've never seen this whole house like this before. The uh, bees are getting kind of crazy over there, Kevin. I'm yeah. glad we didn't hit. I'm glad we didn't get into any of them. They are getting wild over there. Oh, they're swarming all over. Woo! They're right above me. They is mad. Man, it's can be. Those little bees are mad. It's hornets. Oh, man, I'm sorry. It's got stuck in my pocket. I didn't mean to stab you in five leather seats. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? It was an accident. Dad put a hole in the seats. There was already holes in the seats. I'm kidding. I don't care. It's a work truck. I don't care. Let's finish this thing. Every worker's got to leave their mark. <laughs> Normally it's on the passenger side seat. Oh, the rain stopped and here comes the heat. Oh yeah, it's going to get hot. Here comes the rain again. Falling on my head like a memory. Right, we got an hour and eight minutes to knock this out, daddy. That's all the space I got we on this not... camera. Oh, you're not even... You recording? Yeah. We're not mowing the backyard, just so you know. It ain't happening. The backyard would be impossible to mow anyways. Oh, so, yeah. It, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. It'd be like eight hours of uh, eight hours of tree cutting back there. Oh, that's brush hog stuff all day long. Like oh, legit yeah. brush hog. Like if we had the tractor. Yeah. But you could get the tractor back there. Right like now. people tell me I need brush hog stuff for like this. The mower will go over tall grass, okay? The mower will eat tall grass like it's nothing. The mower will not eat Trees. three inch wide tall trees it just it doesn't like that i don't know i've ate a few of them i have to i, I mean i i i ran over a couple like this and it chewed them up yeah i don't know if i should have but yeah. it's not built for that look here's one right here look that's yeah. as big as my finger that's a baby tree okay you want that's a bigger an bitty baby tree yeah that's a baby tree too i hit that one no that one I <laughs> no. you did cut this one that one's not such a baby tree, but it, it laid it over. I told you. Well, I, yeah, I'm not going to just like pop a wheelie. I'm not that good. I would. All right, so we got some big stuff and some little stuff, and let's get this done. Dude, those bees are everywhere. Dude, those bees, I thought, oh. Look at them. They're all up in this. Well, this was their home, man. This was not their home, daddy. Those are different bees, aren't they? No, nah, I'm pretty sure those are the bees from the house. And they, they are not. They ain't killer bees, are they? I don't know. Well, obviously not, because we're still alive. Sure look like bees to me. Yeah, they bees are. Right. And this is a spot where somebody watches my video and they're like, I can't believe you cut the grass and flowers and they're hurting the bees. The was, environment. Look at that big, wide, open field across the street, okay? Calm down with all that. There's like thousands of acres out there. There, there the bees can feed off of really beautiful flowers that grow here because I stopped and picked some for mom a couple years back. I couldn't see the house in the spring, yeah. They're, they're, they're I don't know what they're called, but they are beautiful. They're kind of like a hyacinth, but they're different. Uh, oh, I'm stepping on ants, dude. Dude, that's not cool. Gotta watch out for that. Hey, did you see where they I will mess you up. There? They I didn't did. look real happy when I hit them. Uh -uh. They were mad. Huh. Oh, yeah, and I am Kevin's dad. I started young fish if you like the shirt it's no longer available on our channel yeah i'll show you this one though my wife said it's uh too insensitive well, i like it i wear yeah. it to work all the time yeah i like it too I'm, i don't care what people think but my wife said it's it's too insensitive i mean i do care but... if i change it to mo ron i'll probably be all right mo ron <laughs> mo ron would work <laughs> mo ron, mo -ron mo essential ron. af moronic the, All right, let's get back to work. The, oh. 
It's not looking good, Husqvarna.
that's made for. I know. Oh. I'll put it in the Gucci. <laughs> oh, you actually cut it down. Yeah, I brought it here. Look what dad found. It says, Welcome to the hood. <laughs> oh. All right, so there's only a little bit of brush left. I trimmed the trees here and trees here. I elevated them. Gotta give it that final beautiful touch. We've got a bunch of trash out here, so I'm actually gonna use the blower to blow all the trash into a pile. So then I can tarp it and haul it away, okay? That's all we're hauling away from this job. Other than that, all that brush is poof, like a big pile over there. But you can see the house again. So let's get back to it. Say what? I imagine he died or something, but and on the wall in there, it says Jeff P. Hood. So that was obviously the name of the man that lived here. For all the years of service, 1999 to 2004. I imagine. Yeah, he must have retired from Tyson's. Might have passed away or something. Yeah. Well, it's sad. I bet he kept the place looking pretty sharp when he lived here. Yeah. 
I imagine, you know, this thing hadn't been up kept since 2004. Yeah. Is that what it says? Yeah. Boy, them bees are everywhere. Yeah, they're just swarming over there. I sure hope they're not killer bees. No. Killer hornets. Well, we're gonna have to do something about all this algae here. The algae? What, what can we do about algae? We can't. We can't leave this place looking like a. A hood? Well, yeah, we can't leave this place looking like a hood. But it is a hood. His name is Jeff Hood. This place is jacked up. This place was bad. I was like, I was like, this ain't gonna take very long. And then we got to working on it. And oh my gosh. There's well, a lot of work involved in this. Oh yeah, and by the way, we did this out of the kindness of our hearts to, to uh, make our community look better. And we'd love to do a lot more. Maybe we will. Oh yeah, and my Husqvarna saw started right up. No problem, <laughs> first try. I gotta say, Sweden, you, you do a hell of a job making a saw. Uh, I know Husqvarna's one of the better brands. So, I'm proud to work there. I think it's a good place. He's biased. He's an employee. <laughs> Schweden, you need to give him a raise, yeah? Yeah, give me a raise, yeah. I like a raise. <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to do that anymore. It's probably like... I, I am not <laughs> sponsored by Husqvarna in any means. I just work there, and uh, I think it's a good, good company. Hey, if you haven't uh, already, and you don't know about it, Dad actually has a channel, um, Mom and Dad, showing their homestead and their house, and... The ducks and chickens and goats and cows and blowing up stuff blowing up stuff if you want to go check out their channel you definitely should it's cabin on the hill i'm going to leave that in the pin comment down below as well as in the uh description so i, I gotta say when when kevin comes down we like to go out and try to conquer something like this together uh, it kind of started a few years ago on the fourth yeah. of july and we've kind of made it a Thing, you know well my channel really took off when dad came down to my house and I was like dad I've had my on that crazy yard all year I want to go cut it but James won't go cut it with me and dad was like let's go let's go knock it out and uh, well last last winter we did the tornado shelter together down here yeah um, we did this crazy one dad does not back down from crazy stuff <laughs> this place here I have it I, you couldn't see the front of the house and uh, I was I always wondered what it really looked like and uh, they're building new houses across the street so they're probably not gonna like seeing this <laughs> one so much but you know that's that's okay I mean uh, obviously they need to do something with the house it's got the old siding on it that nobody likes anymore because it causes cancer is she a bestest yeah. yeah it's a bestest and it's got bees in it, and I imagine that our local fire department will come burn this down because they do it for training, and it'll be easier for them to get into, so. I, I don't really know what's going on here, but. It, you know, it's really a nice little piece of property if you'd take the house down. Yeah, the house would have to go. And build a little cabin here or something. This would be a sweet spot because yeah. it's out a ways. It's off, right off the highway though, so you'd have like a pet cemetery thing out back. You know? Really, with as rough as the uh, that cemetery, <laughs> <laughs> with as rough as the house is, it needs demo. We're going to uh, go ahead and blow off the concrete. You gonna make it look shiny? Yeah, we're gonna blow this all off, and then I'm gonna blow all the trash down into a pile. Uh, Dad, while I'm doing that, I think the only spot we really need to weedy is that little uh, ditch. I got you. And uh, maybe over here by the garage. This house is rotten. Look at that. Man. The windows are rotted out. Dad wants to go the extra mile. I'm saying, I'm saying no, because it starts, okay? This is how you guys work, which is how I work too, okay? Because I know it's like take an inch, give a mile, that kind of thing. See, I'm like, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to do that. And then I start doing stuff. I'll start cleaning this up. And then before I know it, I'm in the backyard. So, <laughs> not, today. not today. Not today. Too hard card. We're not hitting the grass right here. I know how I work, it, I won't stop. So, blower, blow the stuff off. There's a lot of debris left here, kind of is what it is. We'll clean up some of it. We'll get it figured out. Hey, look at that bad boy. This is nice. Where'd you get that from? Well, my son said, Dad, would you like one of these? And I'm like, I don't know. I've never had a straight shaft before. And he let me have this as a gift. And 
dad's using a curve shaft trimmer and if you're looking for a trimmer don't get curve shaft it'll hurt your back it's really slow to weed eat with it's it's no fun yeah. this is the big boy uh srm 3020t this is like the biggest weed eater model that echo makes uh it's still got the the trimmer guard on it which is good for him because then he won't get smacked in the leg but if you do want to take that off you no, can and no. you can you can no, weed eat a real first. large area safety first see i'm more of a safety third production first kind of guy well production okay but safety first we can't do production without safety well when i'm working alone i get to be production production first yeah but if you hurt yourself then you can't do nothing uh-huh okay here we go this is it let's see how this thing fires up oh, you gotta have it on it is on okay well that's not so good echo prime it once not yeah, so now flip good, it down. Oh, flip it down. Not so good. I'm just kidding. I was gonna have a coochie moment. Ah! 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 I want to tell y'all this looks awesome. I drove by here earlier this morning. You couldn't even see this damn house. Now it looks beautiful. Y'all do a hell of a job. Thank Good you, job, man. guys. Hey, uh, Good job, man. You, What's your name, brother? Kenneth McGee. Wonderful hey, meeting you, man. Hey, nice meeting you. Hey, I like your shirt. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I tell my daughter, we even drove by earlier today. I told her, I said, look, a while ago, I said, earlier, you couldn't even see that damn house. No. I said, now look at it. I said, Look good. Yeah, it's crazy. Isn't Y'all it? done a hell of a job, man. It's come a long way. We yep. did, we're not gonna do the back. No, hey, y'all done. Hey, y'all done enough, man. I thought it was pretty cool to be able to see it again. Yeah. I've been here for seven years. I've never been able to see that house. Well, you know what? My niece lives over here off of JB Steel Road, yeah. so I've drove by here plenty of times, and I've I've never seen the house till today. Is that right? And I saw, as a matter of fact, I saw y'all when y'all first got here, I guess, because I saw him walking up to the house, I guess, checking it out before y'all ever started. Take it, take it, yeah. yeah. And that's what I said. All right, y'all have a good day, sir. Right, you, you have a good one, man. Like, you didn't pick up all the trash. Whatever, you weren't here doing it. <laughs> that could be helpful. I'm tired. I'm tired. That's too bad. Sometimes, Red Ball. Sometimes, Red Ball. That's too damn bad. You get to work. Just keep on digging. Looks like somebody actually lives here again. Oh, 
Long care juggernaut. You good? Uh, He's looking long chair. Not long chair. Long hair. Not long hair. Long yeah. care juggernaut. But long care. Long, long care, care juggernaut. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> you better not put that in there. <laughs> where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? What is that stuff? Straight chlorine. So stay back there, Daddy. Okay. It's not good to breathe in and whatnot. You might have spread the pores too. Production first, safety third, you know. Where's your face mask at? I got one in the truck. Let's put it on. It's only 10% chlorine. Boy, you messing with your daddy again? It's only 10% chlorine. This place might be a turd, but it's gonna be the best looking turd out here on the block. <laughs> Dang, I can smell that stuff over here. Yeah, you can. Whoa, look at that, it just disappeared. Might have to go, isn't it? Hey, you better get off me, spider. Better watch those bees when you're up there. Oh, I won't get them. No, I mean, you might upset them. They don't like it. I bet they don't. I'm gonna stay away from them. <laughs> they don't like it. <laughs> I get it, bees. I'm staying away. I swear, I'm not gonna go by you. Where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? What, what am I doing that for? I don't know. Nobody's ever going to see it, but we're going to make it shine, baby. <laughs> it smells like a swimming pool. All right, here we are at the end of another one. It was crazy. Bunch of trees over here. The house, you couldn't even see it. Yeah. We even cleaned the algae off. We're not going to rinse it off, but we sprayed it with uh, chlorinating liquid, which will, well, all the algae will turn white and the place will look as good as it's going to get. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna lie to you and say it's gonna look great. It's just, it's not. It looks pretty good actually for an old house. Considering where we started, dude, look at these bees. These bees are swarming. I don't know, swarming is probably what they normally do. They're flying in and out looking for honey. Now I did not spray them with chemicals. So that wouldn't be cool. I don't even know if you can see them, but there's a big nest up there, which is pretty cool. I think bees are cool, so. Now for everybody that gives me crap about mowing over flowers, I know it's bad for the bees. Look at all the land over there where bees can thrive. They won't care about this tiny little front yard. What are your thoughts, Dad? How was it? Uh, I had a lot of fun. I always enjoy working with you. Yeah? Yeah. When uh, Kevin's like, what do you want to do tomorrow, Dad? I'm like, well, Kevin, we'll do whatever you want. And I know he's been looking at this lawn, so I was like, we can do this, or we can go do a power worship video, or whatever you want. So when we when we got up this morning, he's like, all right, Dad, let's go let's go get it. And <laughs> we've been here for what eight hours? It's been a while. We've been here about eight hours. We had to leave for a brief minute to cool off. To cool off and go get Dad's saw. Yeah, because the coocher the coocher failed and uh, it it didn't pass its test. Not that all coochers are bad, but that one was uh, defective, I think. And I don't know. Something's wrong with it. It might have been user error, okay? I mean, maybe I gave it too much choke. It didn't have a prime bulb. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's because it's hot. All I know for sure is that when I'm using equipment, I don't want to pull on it until I feel like I'm going to have a stroke on the lawn. It's hot. It's like 100 and... It's 103, maybe. That's probably 105, 110 With heat about index. 85% humidity yeah it's hot and after it rained it went up a little bit so it felt good while it was raining though we worked in the rain a little bit well it's real nice when there's a little bit of cloud cover up there oh yeah but uh it kinda a saves. lot of it there was no cloud cover let's go out to the road and take a look at this because it looks completely different in my opinion much much better i did get a lot of the trash out of here i didn't get all the trash out of here i didn't see that earlier well i don't think somebody just throw that away anyway Huh? Well, it's all good. It is what it is. But uh, yeah, from the road, I mean, what a transition. We took out a lot of trees. I was gonna keep this. It looked like a crepe myrtle with something growing through it. It ended up being like an old fruit tree that was obviously having a hard time. So what looked like a crepe myrtle was just dead tree limbs. And then dad slammed down the grass. We got a huge pile of brush over here. 
That's somebody else's problem now, okay? Well, I don't even think anybody's lived here since. I think something happened to he probably passed Jeff away. Hood. I think he passed away, and he probably got in probate, or the state took it over, and who knows? You know, people ask me about the... Uh, People ask me why I cut the abandoned yards and check this out. My parents had a house in Kansas and it was the house I grew up as a teenager. Um, that house sits vacant and abandoned now today. You know, they lost their home during the housing bubble in 2008, like a lot of people did. Yeah. And then that house went to auction and since it sold on auction and sat vacant, there's a lot of um, like burn piles and it looks like there's people doing meth and going crazy and wild out there. But, uh, you know, when I showed my daughter, my well, my wife took my daughter to go check it out. My daughter actually cried because that was daddy's house. And, you know, to her, she doesn't understand it. So while I have no emotional attachment to it because it was just memories for me, it is sad to see it like that. But, you know, it does impact me. So, you know, one reason why I tackle these is one, oftentimes I'm in a community, which this one, there's, there's no neighbors. But when there's neighbors, you got a lot of fleas, ticks, snakes, mosquitoes. Well, you had a tick on you. Yeah, ticks carry Lyme disease. You know, um, I'm hoping I snakes and stuff here. are no good for your kids. Mosquitoes carry West Nile around here. Uh, so it is dangerous. But the other thing is, man, you never know who owns this. Like I go by my grandma's house, you know, before she passed away, I go look at her house every now and then and I'm just like, yeah. Man, it's, it's gone dude it that just looks a, that used to be a beautiful property too yeah it's beautiful and to me it's special even even our house in kansas was beautiful when we first moved in yeah the bank took a hold of it and it just went bad from there i mean yeah they just destroyed it i mean i've heard bad things about it people that we know have stopped by there and said man you would you wouldn't believe it it's just terrible well i went by there uh, a few months ago i was actually going to cut I was going to make a video of this yard and it is the only yard to date that I've said I was going to make a video on and I legitimately backed down. And the reason being is when I went out there, I was like, this is a, a severe safety risk. Like there was a, a Gaylord, if you know what a Gaylord is, big box. So there's a Gaylord of like shells, you know, like uh, not seashells, but like mortar shells or something uh that were you know ready to be loaded up there's wire and stuff all in the yard where you can tell people were burning metal and you know scrapping it and doing that kind of stuff there's poison ivy four foot high all the way around the house wow. the uh awning for our you know a car on the back of the back of the house that fell down um it, it just it's in chaos and it's the only yard to date that i was like you know i don't want to be out here and i don't want to get shot you know, a lot of people are like, you know, I would shoot you if you showed up on my property. I got to tell you right now, that one, I was like, no, nah, it's, a, it's a straight safety risk. So I decided to go against that one. Anyways, I'm rambling on. Uh, I got to say, Kevin, people have been slowing down and looking because the seven years that I've lived in this town, you could not see this house from the road. No. I mean, you just couldn't see it. It was... It's pretty incredible. Well, I was down here scouting this past winter and I saw this and I was like, ooh, I should cut it. But it, everything was brown. All the grass was brown. So I didn't want to cut it yet. But uh, I don't like picking fruit before it's ripe. <laughs> 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 but no, seriously. Uh, I was going to uh, cut this one. I went ahead and waited. But while I was down here, I'm driving back and forth to town and I'm like, where is that place at? I thought I was passing it. Uh, you can it's even see it. very easy to miss because you've got, you know, 150 feet of tree lines here, 150 feet of tree lines here, and this little 50, 60 foot stretch in the middle that was completely covered by trees. So it's just real easy to miss. But it's, I don't know. Maybe somebody will come in and get in contact with somebody and buy it now. You never know. Well, you know, it's a really nice piece of property. I don't think they can fix the house. But... No, I would tear it down. But you know, I've seen people living in worse around here. Yeah. I'm just saying. So you never know. How do you guys like the bonus algae cleanup? It's not perfect. There's still some algae there. I couldn't rinse it off, so I just sprayed it on. It'll be all right. 
um, <laughs> the house is going to be torn down so it's not like it matters but uh you know I sprayed the algae all that algae is gonna turn white it'll die off kind of like you're seeing it here it starts turning white it'll do all that here and it'll just flake off down the road can you feed a bee? I see the bees. I'm glad they wasn't in the trees. Yeah. All right. That one's a. That one's a wrap. We're out. Well, Kevin, I just want to say I love working with you and hanging out with you. I don't get to see you a whole lot, and it, it means a lot to me to get to do these things with you. Well, I appreciate it, Dad. <laughs> people, uh, people think we only do this for money. Uh, no, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a gesture of kindness. Yeah. It's uh, something you don't see every day in the world nowadays, and people are just very cold. So if you could do something kind for somebody, do it, because they will appreciate it. I just think it's a, it's a good thing to uh, to help your help people that deserve to be helped. Yeah. Not those that are destroying their lives and 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 taking advantage of the world, but those who are absolutely needing help deserve it well in this case they're gonna say well the bank probably owns that and who are you helping them the house has been hidden from the world and somebody might see this and go ask the bank whose house that is and end up buying this house yeah. because they can actually see it again yeah you never know i mean this place ain't really that bad i mean we could pick hey it man in arkansas this thing is it's livable jewel. it's a jewel this, this thing this thing is oh high class little tlc on this baby and she's shining like a diamond <laughs> a little paint a lot of wood some <laughs> glass it's missing some glass new roof but you know what if you needed a place you'd be happy to own this house we're gathered here to lay this kitchen to rest it was a hot day she wasn't running jay and i put her down Gave her her last beat. Would you like to say any words, Kevin? No, okay, Kevin, come say some words. That's the first coochie I put in the ground. That's all she gets. I miss you, coochie. You were good for at least one beating. <laughs> Rest in peace, Gucci.